glad you guys are here to worship with us today. Let's stand up. Let's put our hands together.
morning, our focus, our focus is on Jesus, not the news, not everything else, not the chaos, but it's on Jesus. And the reason for that is because Jesus is peace. He is the Prince of Peace. Jesus says in his word that the peace I give you is not like the peace the world gives you. So as we continue to worship this morning, let's focus and ask Jesus, how can I be more like you? I wanna be that peace in my family, in my workplace, in my community. Help me to be more like Jesus. Let's sing this together, I wanna teach you this. If more of you means less of me, take everything. Yes, all of you is all I need.
We want more of you. Won't you meet us here? Not just this place, but in our hearts too, Lord. Won't you meet us here? I want to be like you, Lord. Not enough Unless you come Will you meet me here again? Cause all I want Is all you are Will you meet me here again? With one voice, church, come up and sing Not enough Yes, you come. Will you meet me here again? All I want, cause all I want is all you are. Will you meet me here again? Just your voices, come on. One time. Not enough, unless you come. Father, we give up the parts of ourselves that we hold on to. Father, we pray that you would take our fear and replace it with peace. Father, we pray that you take our chaos and replace it with order and gentleness. As we continue to worship this morning, Lord, I pray that you give Pastor Gary wisdom, that you would have your hand on this building and on these people and on this community, Lord. Your presence is here, Lord. We love you. We thank you for the cross and how it sets us free. And we pray these things in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Come on, let's make a joyful noise, church. Come on. Thanks so much for coming out, being with us this weekend. I remember the first time I learned to ride a bike. Maybe you do as well. Maybe you're remembering that as I'm talking. You remember the first time you ever got on the bike? Your parents, they did a little thing with you where they took the training wheels off and, and then somebody followed you at the seat and they held on to the seat. And then eventually they started running alongside you. And you wobbled a little bit, but then eventually, if you learned to ride well, you took off and you were just kind of flowing in the wind and the hair was flowing back as you were speeding down the street. Man, that was a great moment for us. I want to talk to you a little bit about riding bikes today. I, do you remember the first time you wrecked? You wobbled, you wobbled, and then you crashed. I was... I was remembering the first time that I wrecked, and I think what was interesting about the first time that I wrecked was I got up and I was looking around, and I think I was more concerned about if somebody saw it. You know, you, you ever see a kid wreck, and then the first thing they do is they look around like, okay, how bad do I look right now? Not even worried about that they're bleeding, they're just like, you know, how bad, how embarrassed am I? And I can remember that as well. It was like, it's like an insecurity uh, not about being injured, but about how bad you looked falling. And today I want to talk to you about insecurity. I had planned to give you a completely different talk this weekend, but things going on in our community, I wanted to, 
I wanted to share something a little different. You know, our series was going to be, Won't You Be My Neighbor? And with all that's going on, I said, I, we got to talk about something very different today. And I want to do that with you. Of course, uh, in the realm of bicycling and learning how to ride a bike, if you hearken back to those times of bike riding, we do have that time of wobbling before we actually get it right. I, I feel like right now in our culture and where we are in America right now, there's a lot of wobbling going on, especially amongst the Christians, where we ought to be on the bike journeying with God, going down the street with the wind going through our hair and just cruising. Instead, the Christians are wobbling right now in our insecurities. And, and so I want to address this. Before I get too far into what I want to talk about, I do want to just address the situation of us meeting and not meeting and all that comes along with that. Uh, we made a decision to meet this week because uh, at the time there were no active cases in our area and amongst our church. And so we decided to do that. And uh, we, of course, if that was to continue, then we would be okay to continuing to meet. However, it, you know, does it, it the way the trends are going, it's possible that very quickly cases could pop up in our area and that could make us quickly have to reevaluate things by the hour. Literally by the hour, we are evaluating things as a church. And I do know that there are many of you, in fact, those of you that are here, you probably would say, okay, I'm glad I got a church to go to, a place to go to this weekend. And the Christians, we do love that, you know, we love to talk, you know, hey, we can still gather, we're going to worship, you know, we're going to do this. And that. But I also want to say that I understand that there's a time when the church has to think about the community. And as we're watching this sort of hour by hour, what we're watching is at what point, uh, because there's active cases in our community, do we need to make sure we're being a good community partner? Guys, I need your support. If the time comes where we can't meet here, that in the other ways that you can be engaged, you'll be engaged, but you'll support the fact that as a church, it has always been our desire to be a good community partner, and we have been. And, and we want to continue to be. And one of the ways we can do that is to do what the community needs us to do in a moment. And, and I look, I, I would... I would I don't have any, you know, I would myself, I, I'd go to church. I, I've stood up here and preached with snot coming out my nose before, like, I don't even care, you know, <laughs> I'll wipe it on my sleeve and keep on preaching. Uh, some of you have come to church before with snot, and you've snotted on me, and I've been like, okay, whatever, that's just the way it goes, you know, so like, I can, I'm a big boy, I, I can handle some things, but it's not about me. It's about our community. And so, uh, please be in touch with us. Please make sure you have connections with us through social media, email, phone number, whatever it may be that you have some connecting point uh, so that we can reach you, reach out to you should there be a need for us to make change. On your way out, there's a little card for social media you can grab on tables outside, go to the connect area if you need one as well. It shows all the five platforms we're currently connected on as a church. We will be updating anything going on on those social media platforms. Uh, of course, our website as well. Uh, we will send out emails. We will make phone calls as things begin to change for our church. And so that is a, a good thing to make sure you're connected that way. Uh, if we were to, I'll draw your attention to what's on the screen now. If we were to have to stop services, we are putting in a plan and pl putting a plan in place. By the way, we, we really already have the framework. Uh, our church has had this and we've been prepared for this. Uh, we're ready with, with, a, with a website that is fully functional now where you can fill out connect cards, you can do prayer requests, uh, you can do comments, you can have chats, you, uh, you can, uh, any needs that you have, you'll be able to share those on that website. You can give and support the ministry there as well, though I do believe the best way for us to engage in our faith will always be shoulder to shoulder, encouraging each other, building one another up in a setting like this. If we have to go away from this gathering and to an online venue, we have it ready to go, and it's a very healthy site, and you will be able to go. I want you to pay attention to that website. It's newwalk.live, so it's, uh, if you go to our main site, we can direct you there, but if you want to go directly to it, 
you go to newwalk.live. We'll still have some Facebook Live settings as well, but if you want, uh, at these particular times, you can go to newwalk.live and you can watch the weekend services. Uh, you see the times. We'll have our two Saturday times, and then we'll have two what we have normal Sunday times, 9.45 and then 11.15. And then we're adding a 6 p.m. The 8.30 is not there, but we're adding a 6 p.m., what will be there? A live worship experience like you see here on the stage. It'll be, we'll be, it will be, we'll have that. Uh, a live host, you'll have a message notes will be there on the site, and of course the teaching as well. So it will be what you see here on the stage, uh, visible to you watching online. And I want to encourage you to pick a time, gather your family, maybe you've got some friends, you'll gather and do, maybe you'll do a house party. Maybe with your current small group, you'll get together and say, hey, you guys want to come over? We'll do a little watch party, watch some things. Say, if everybody's healthy, then come on over. Let's have our little gathering. In fact, we're going to be prepared. This is really cool. If you want to have a watch party at your home, should this occur, we will have donuts. We'll have, um, for real, we'll, we'll get message notes printed out for you. We'll have things that you can take to your group as well. And, and we'll, you can come pick them up on the weekend before your gathering and we'll give them to you to take to your gathering. You'll brew the coffee, we'll give you the donuts. So we're gathering, all, we'll have all kinds of opportunities to figure this thing out for however long it takes. And so I want to also ask you to support us by being a part of one of those online venues as well. If you ha have a gathering at your home, to tell us how many people are there, how many are watching online in a setting like that. We'd love to know things like that. So I'm just kind of laying the groundwork for what may actually happen. If you need more information about how to do that little website, of course, there's a card on your seat you can take with you that has information about our, li our newwalk.live setting. Uh, maybe you're not tech savvy. If you're, if you're good with technology, this is a very easy thing to do. But maybe you're not tech savvy and you're like, Gary, I got, I got the internet at home, but I really don't know what to do with it. We will help you. There's a little sheet that you can pick up at the connect table on your way out down the hall on the left-hand side, give you instruction. If you still got a VCR and it flashes 12 o'clock, we can help you. We'll give you this little sheet to get you going with that as well. So you can pick that up down the hall. Something else you can pick up on your way out, out the doors. We got stacks of giving envelopes. You know, 80% of our giving comes online. Now, if you do give online and you're still getting a paycheck, I want to ask you to continue to support us. Uh, maybe you're not giving online. You'll start giving online. If you're giving to greater things, you're still getting a paycheck. I'm going to ask you to continue to support those things because if you want a healthy church to return to, that'll be important. But also, uh, if you give in service and you know that we may not be meeting here, grab some of those envelopes. They're prepaid, self-addressed. Prepaid, you can drop those in the mail as well. Those are on the way out the door. Grab some of those. Just preparing for what may be. Now, I want to get back on track talking about biking and insecurities. And that's, that's really where we are right now. Now more than ever, we're seeing what does it look like to live in a culture where people are insecure. You're seeing it right now. What does it look like to live in a culture where people have built their life on things that are empty? You're seeing it right now. I put in your notes, where does insecurity come from? The dictionary tells us this. It comes from self-doubt and fear. If you're taking notes, you can write that down. Insecurity comes from self-doubt and fear. Like I'm riding my bike. I feel like I've got things going on pretty good. And then some potholes some speed bumps. It looks a little shaky. I take my eyes off what I need to have my eyes on. I start to wobble a little bit. I get insecure. Maybe I fall. Maybe I stop, put my feet on the ground because I'm scared to go forward. We are living in that right now. You're seeing it come, you see it come to fruition all around us. Insecurity happens when the things that you have built your life on the little bubble that you, that of comfortability you've built your life on. like Comfortability happens when you and I feel like things are going well in relationships, things are going well in our marriage, things are going well in our finances, the job, the career. Things are going really, really well. And then all of a sudden, there's a shakeup, and that comfortability, it starts to get uncomfortable. Then fear sets in, then doubt and insecurity. 
And right now, what we're seeing is that shakeup of everybody's comfort zone, and they're scrambling. How do you know when people are insecure, they're grabbing a hold of anything they can grab a hold of? Like uh, when, when you're riding the bike and, you know, your parents are there running by your side trying to help you ride that bike and you start to wobble. You might grab your parent's arm. Maybe their hand is on the, the, the handlebar as they're guiding. You might, things get wobbly. You grab them because you're looking for security. Grab anything around you looking for security. Before the coronavirus ever came, how do you know somebody's insecure in life? They grab a hold of anything they can grab a hold of. You know, I, I feel insecure, I need to grab another relationship. I feel insecure, I need to grab another pill. I feel insecure, I need to grab more possessions or I need more money. So it's a sign of insecurity. It's already been there before the coronavirus. Now the coronavirus comes, what do we see? People grabbing a hold, literally grabbing toilet paper. <laughs> really, like totally like freaking out, insecure, let's grab toilet paper. And like, I don't know if you figured this out. Like, I, I learned this a long time ago. I have these things in my yard. They're trees with big leaves. <laughs> and they'll work just fine. Newspaper. My goodness gracious. So we can, guys, we can survive this. But you see this, this craziness of grabbing, grabbing, grabbing a hold of things, a sign of people who are stressed out, people who are feeling uncomfortable, people who are about to freeze, like just a hard freeze in life, not understanding what's taking place. And so I wrote in your notes, what we're going to break down is when I feel like things in my life and things around me are starting to crumble, what do I need to do? So how are we going to recalibrate this so that we're ready going forward? How do we not stop? How do we keep going, keep from wobbling, keep fear from setting in, doubt, insecurity from setting in. And these times, right now, is the time when we're seeing it happening. How can the Christians especially be ready? And we're going to look at a scripture in Psalm 139 that David gives us to help us. This is so important because David went through a time in his life where the walls were caving in on him. He felt like everything was crashing around him. His success, his the things, the promises of God felt like it's all caving in on him. You know, uh, he, he wasn't dealing with the coronavirus, but he was dealing with the sin virus. And he started looking at things he shouldn't look at and being in places he shouldn't be at. And then he crossed the line and had an adulterous relationship, and then had somebody killed for it, and tried to hide it, hide it, hide it, and in that secrecy, and the fear, and that self-doubt, the walls feel like they're caving in. What did David do? What can we do that David did? And so we're going to look at this together, and if you're taking notes, I wrote in your notes, here's the first thing I can do. I can remember that God knows me. It sounds so simple, you know, it sounds so like 30,000 foot. Of course, remember God knows me. What does that actually mean? And, and how important is that for right now? And I want to share this with you. Here's what it says, Psalm 30, 139, verse 1. Oh, Lord, you have examined my heart. You know everything about me. You know when I sit down. You know when I stand up. You know my thoughts when I am far away. God knows when you have the feelings in your life that things are falling apart, He knows. And, and that's important because if we're not careful, what we will do is try to suppress or deal with that fear in the wrong way, grabbing a hold of things, trying to find solutions, temporary solutions, instead of just talking to the Heavenly Father who already knows your fear. He just wants to talk, he, he wants to talk with you about it. We said last week when we were talking about how to deal in the richness of forgiveness, we, had like, we have to be reminded that the feelings that we're feeling, a brokenness, like God already knows them. We, the confession is simply talking to God about what God already knows. And when you're dealing with fear, if you're not careful, instead of going to God, you'll go to these other things, and, you, and you'll even put on a facade. You'll try to make everybody think you're not fearful, but deep down inside, 
you actually are. And what I want you to know is that hey, hey, it's okay. It's okay. It's okay to talk to God and say, I, I, there's something creeping in here. Because the more you let it creep in, the more it consumes your thoughts. The more you listen to the, to the voices of chaos in our culture right now, and the social media, and the news media, uh, the stuff that's just permeating chaos into our lives, the more you magnify the fear, the more it consumes you. We've talked about the more you magnify God and focus on God, the more He is magnified. God knows right now if fear is creeping in. Right now, for some of you it has. Others of you, I've heard from you, are like, man, I'm not, I'm not worried about it. But if the time comes in the next week or two when a fear creeps in, say, you know what, I'm not going to magnify that. God, you know that I'm having this fearful thought. God, I am turning to you. At our church, since the very beginning, what we've wanted is for people who are dealing with some sort of brokenness or doubt or fear or insecurity to just, say, just be honest about it. And just, uh, you know what, I, I, I've got this going on. Like, I'm, uh, I, I'm struggling with this. And to say, you know what, it's okay to not be okay. It's okay to talk about things that you need to talk about and ultimately talk about them with God. And, and I think for far too long in the church, what we've ended up doing is we've created environments in the church where, you, you know, people are struggling, they're dealing with insecurity, they're dealing with fear. And, you know, but as long as you got the big cross around your neck and as long as you're wearing the right clothes and you got your big Bible and you come to church and you speak Christianese in the right Christian language, then nobody will really know the insecurities and struggles that you're dealing with. And, and God says, hey, hey, wait, 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 no, 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 don't hide those fears, don't hide those doubts, don't try to play games with it, just be honest with it. And before the coronavirus ever came. Did, did God know about your struggle with anger? Yes. God know that like you're, you, you get upset regularly with this person that you work with and you don't know how to like deal with that frustration. He, he already knew. Does he know how you are when you get cut off in traffic and you go batty? God knows. Does he know the struggles in your marriage? Does he know the struggles in your life? God knows. Well, in these coming weeks and months, God, I you know the fear. I'm turning to you. Question for you. Did God know in 2020 there would be a coronavirus? Yes. He, he already knows all these things. It's, it's the reason why he sent Jesus Christ. So that we wouldn't go through these things alone. So we would know and have a relationship with our Heavenly Father. So we utilize that relationship in these times, highs and lows in our life. To say, God, I'm journeying with you. I am not going to hide and suppress this fear. I'm going to be open with it so that I can deal with it. I, I, I was thinking of a time when just some little bit of fear creeped in on me and started to just mess up my mind. I, I was speaking at a conference, and there were pastors there. And there was two speakers that day. I, I was the second one. Another guy went before me. He was the first one. And see, he had these little initials in front of his name when he gets intro introduced, DR, period. And so they introduced him to come out on the stage and speak. And, uh, you know, I had a good talk ready to go after him. I, I was ready. I felt like I, I was going to deliver a good talk to these pastors. Uh, but when they announced him, they said, here's doctor, you know. And I thought, my goodness, how am I compared to this guy? Like, I have to follow him? Uh, I probably should have gone back to school before I came to a conference like this because there's no way I will ever be able to deliver a talk as good as the doctor. And then, you know, what ends up happening is fear creeps in. Like, am I good enough? Is this going to work? You know, maybe my talk's not so good. I was confident in my talk, but now I'm fearful. Doubt, fear, doubt, insecurity creeps in. And I had to get a handle on that in the moment or I was going to go out and lay an egg. And you're going to go out and lay an egg in our world and in our culture and in our community if you don't get a handle on the fear and the doubt and the insecurity. And as Christians... Above all, as Christians, we have to be the people. It is in moments like this. It is in times like this where we cannot let the fear consume us. We have to be the light for our community. And folks, the biggest place we are the light for our community is not here on the weekends. It's when we leave here 
and go into our community and in our neighborhood and online and things like that. Here's the next thing I put in your notes. I've got to remember that God is with me, that, that He's with me. Here's what it goes on and says in Psalm 139 and verse 3. And then we'll go to verse 7 and verse 11. Here's what it says. You see me when I travel, when I rest at home. You know everything I do. You know what I'm going to say before I say it, Lord. You go before me. You follow me. You place your hand of blessing on my head. I can never escape your spirit. It says in verse 7, I can never get away from your what? Presence. He's all around us. In verse 11, I could ask the darkness to hide me and the light around me to become night. But even in darkness, I cannot hide from you. To you, the night shines as bright as day. He's there. When you were, maybe you were like me, I I helped teach my kids to ride bikes. And and, uh, when you do that as a parent, you know, you grab the seat here. And you kind of hold them steady. Maybe you're, you're kind of doing this with them for a while. And, and then, then you've got to grab the seat maybe. And then eventually, eventually, you let go of the seat, but you keep kind of running with them, running alongside them just in case things start to wobble or fall. That's what we do with our kids. You know, it's, 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 <laughs> it's pretty tiring because like you, gotta, you keep doing, okay, do it again, Daddy. Just do it again, Daddy. You know, and you're running alongside them. And you, at some point, you're like, <gasps> You know, you're gasping for air doing this exercise of trying to teach your kids how to ride a bike. And at some point, you can't stay alongside them anymore. At some point, you just say, okay, here you go on down the road. And you're just kind of like, there they go. I don't know what's going to happen, but there they go. I'm here to tell you today, and you need to hear this this morning. In your flesh, as a parent, you get tired but you need to know this, your heavenly father never gets tired of running by your side. Never gets tired. And you need to know that right now. He is not tired. He is present. He is there. You think things are wobbling. You think there's a little bit of fear going on right now. He is there. He is guiding you. He is by your side. He goes before you. He goes behind you. He goes around you. His presence is everywhere. And at times in our lives, like we need to know this and we need to be reminded of this because Fear can cause us to forget that God is there because we're so focused on the fear. Man, I got to tell you, there's been times in my life I needed to know that God was with me. I, I, I cannot do, okay, God, I can't do this alone. God, I need your strength. I've tried to do it on my own, but whatever, but I can't do it. One of the times was when I, I mean, when I got married, Sean and I talked about the, a couple of weeks ago, we were talking about how when she was up here, how, my goodness, man, but the first couple, few years of the marriage, like, we wouldn't have survived if I hadn't figured things out, you know, I need, I found Jesus Christ a few years into our marriage, and it completely changed everything, the future of our marriage and our family, it was a big moment, but I remember knowing, like, because, I don't know if you were, you were like this, and you're here today, and you're a guy, or maybe uh, a lady, you know, we, We really sometimes, we don't know what we're doing when we get married, you know, like, especially men, we've got the honeymoon night figured out, but beyond that, we really, we don't really know what's going on, you know, and, and uh, that was the case for me, and I, you, you get to this place where you're like, I'm at the end of me. I'm at the end of me. And when I came to know Christ, I can remember thinking, God, I have reached the end of me in my marriage. God, I need you to come alongside me and help me be the husband that I need to be. Because I, will, I, I need this, God. I need you to journey with me, God. I, I want to be good to my wife, and I want to be a good father one day, and I want to be the man that I need to be. I don't want to be no fairy man that can't handle his wife and his family the way that he needs to lead them and care for them and lead them to the things of Jesus Christ. I want to be a strong man of God for my family. And God came along my side and guided me to be the husband that I needed to be, and still today, I depend on him. Listen, when we had kids, <laughs> man, I needed help. Like you, I ain't never raised no kids before. I remember when my wife got pregnant. Uh, 
I thought for sure it was going to be a boy, but either way, I like, okay, I need a little bit of help because I've never done this before, but yeah, I had Christ in my life now, and I remember going, okay, God, to be a parent, to be a father, I'm, I'm going to need your help, but I thought for sure we were going to have boys because I grew up, uh, you know, my family, is my, just a brother and me, and then, you know, my dad, he had seven brothers and no sisters, and then my brother had two kids, and they were both boys, so I just kind of figured out, like, okay, well, we're probably going to have boys. And I'll never forget when they were doing the sonogram and the lady said, it's a girl. <laughs> and I'm going, what do I do with this? <laughs> I never had no, I don't know what this is. I, I don't, and I remember saying, God, I need your help. God, there's no way <laughs> I can do this on my own. Like, I need your help. I need you because I, I want to be a good father to daughters. I need to be a good father to my daughter. And I mean, I say, okay, God, come alongside me and help me with this. And I'm here to tell you from that moment, God was like, okay, I, Gary, I'm going to teach you how to be a good father to daughters. And I don't always get it right. But with God's help, I was able to do what I needed to do to be that father. And now I have two, two daughters. Now, the other time was when we started this church. I needed God by my side when we started this church. I'm a, I, 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 just, I really didn't. I didn't know what we were doing here, you know, like I, they asked me to be a pastor and I was gung-ho about that because, you know, it's going to be really exciting and all of that and, and we were going to reach a lot of people and we were so excited to start New Walk. It was a big, big deal and I remember like a week before the church starting, the weight of the feeling of like, oh my gosh, now it's real, like, hey buddy, hey, 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 hey. this mindset like in my mind is like, hey, you, you know you never pastored before, right? And now you're starting a church? Hey, uh, you, you, you know you never started a church before, and now you're starting a church? And the doubt and the fear started creeping in. And oh, by the way, all these people are going to start coming, and marriages are depending on you, and, and families are depending on you, and people are dealing with addictions, and they're depending on you, and, and, and they're giving church a chance for the first time in their life or the last time in their life, and they're depending on you. And I started to feel that weight, and I remember God being by my side saying, hey, 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 this ain't on you, it's on me. But it was easy with fear and doubt to let that stuff creep in and to forget that God was by my side. Guys, he's by, our, he's by our side. But I think so much of what the chaos and panic is that we're dealing with right now in our culture is just simply this. What does it look like when a bunch of people come to the end of themselves and have nowhere to go? What does it feel like when you have lost control and that feeling of losing control. That, that's where we are. When you have lost, when you have that feeling like you have lost control and you don't understand who is actually in control, it is a very broken feeling. It is a sobering moment. And some people are having that sobering moment that they are not in control. And what do the believers do? We say, God is in control. He is by my side. I'm going to remember that he is by my side. Here's the next thing. Not only do I remember that he knows me, not only do I remember that he is with me, but I remember that God made me. And, and I need to remember this, and I'll tell you why you need to remember this right now. It's, it says this in Psalms, in Psalm 139, verse 13. You made all the delicate inner parts of my body. You knit me together in my mother's womb. God, you are making all of that. You, thank you for making me so wonderfully complex. Your workmanship is marvelous. How well I know it. You watched me as I was being formed in utter seclusion, as I was woven together in the dark of the womb. God, you, you, you uniquely crafted me. Like the design that you made me, it, it was a unique and crafted design. That uniqueness and the, that you, you were born into this world and during this time for a purpose, for a plan. I, I think though sometimes in chaos we forget that purpose. We forget the unique giftedness that God has given. For this moment, for the coronavirus time in 2020, you are here and have been given for a purpose to meet some sort of need that we have going on in our world right now. And, 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 but yet with fear, when fear and chaos sets in and insecurity, what we end up doing is getting very 
self-focused and self-centered. Like, what do I need to do for me? And when fear consumes us and insecurity consumes us, we forget that we still are supposed to be the church to go out to reach a lost and broken world, but you can't le- reach a lost and broken world when all you're worried about is your own personal struggle. And the enemy wants to use a moment like this for you to forget about the uniqueness he has wired you with. And look, we were all wired differently. Heck, I'm wired different than you, and I've had to learn to love the wiring that God gave me. There's some things I like that he gave me, and the ability maybe to gift the gift to teach or whatever. I, I love that I'm six foot two. Because I can see above people all the time, you know, like above the crowds. I love that. I love that. But there's some things I, I wished I had gotten differently. You know, I wish I could sing and play music. I love that. Those guys look so cool when they do that. I don't ever get to do that. I wish that, you know, I wasn't so like ADD, squirrel, you know, I wish that, because that, that's bothersome, and, and I wish I had more muscles, like, I, I wish I had more muscles, some guys have more muscles, but I don't have those things, but I have been wired in a certain way that God is utilizing my giftedness and my skill set, and I cannot forget that, and you cannot forget that, and what we do here on the weekends is we create environments here at our church where people who have a passion, who have a skill set, have an ability, can come and serve and utilize that giftedness here at this facility to reach people in our community, but what if it's gone? Do you just stop reaching people? Do you just stop serving people? Folks, this is the time where we stand up as a church and say, hey, how can I help you? What can I do for you? There are people in your neighborhood. There are people around you that could utilize some help. Maybe their lawn gets cut. Maybe your neighbor needs some food. And there's, there are elderly right now that are scared to leave their homes. And you could go to their home and say, hey, how can I help you? What can I bring you? Some of you hoarded the toilet paper and your neighbor needs toilet paper. Like you could give them a couple, you could spare a square, you know what I mean? Like you could do that. There are things that we can do to be generous, to be caring. And so I'm challenging you as a church and as a people, get outside of yourself and care about your neighbor. Care about people around you. Let us not get laser focused on our own needs that we forget about our community. Let us be pointing people to Jesus through our goodness that God is doing in us. Here's, here's the last thing that I gave you. I'm going to have the band come out. They're going to join me here on the stage. But here's what it says. I got to remember that God is guiding me all the way through this. He wants to, and he is guiding me all the way through this. In Psalm 139, it goes on and says this in verse 24. God is going to lead me along the path of everlasting life. That promise hasn't changed because of the coronavirus, that God will lead me to everlasting life. Uh, that hasn't changed. It's still there. We just got to stay, we got to stay on course. Here's what it says in Proverbs 3, in verse 5, trust in the Lord with all your heart, lean not Depend not on your own understanding. You're going to stay focused on trusting God. And then it goes on and says, seek his will in all that you do, and he will show you the path that you need to take. Figure, okay, uh, setting aside the chaos of the news and all the social media stuff that's out there, God, no, 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 (laughs) no. What is the path you have for me? Like, I'm on my bike. And there's a lot of places to turn right now. And there's a lot of potholes. And th- God, where do you want me to go? God, you're going to guide me. And that's got to be our focus. God, where are you sending me? When Sean was up here with me a couple of weeks ago, we said, back in 2008, one of the biggest struggles we saw was that there were people When the bubble burst and the economy crashed, they had their whole life built on finances or they had their life built on careers and they had their life built on status and their homes and their cars. And when all of that was stripped away, a rich brokenness hit our community. And we said just two weeks ago, what would happen if all of that was pulled out from underneath you in an instant? What would you be left with? This is the moment right now. I don't, I, probably what we're dealing with is short-lived. There may be longer consequences, but it's probably a short-lived thing, and we'll get through it. Obviously, we're going to get through it, but if it's all stripped away, what's really there? 
Are you following God or are you following finances? Are you following God or are you following, uh, you know, the news? Like, are you following God or are you following relationships? Are you following God or are you following career or possessions? What path are you on? We can't lose that focus. Some of you here today, you need to be challenged to stay focused on the things of God. I love the promise of I-35. That's what I call it, the promise of I-35. And it's Isaiah 35 and verse 8. And here's what it says. The scripture pointing to salvation through Jesus Christ, but put the lens on it of 2020 and what we're going through right now. And a great road will go through that once deserted land. It will be named the Highway of Holiness. Evil-minded people will never travel on it. It will be only for those who walk in God's ways. Fools will never walk there. Lions will not lurk along its course, nor any other ferocious beast. Here will be no dangers. Only the redeemed will walk on it. Those who've been ransomed by the Lord will return. They will enter Jerusalem singing, crowned with everlasting joy, sorrow, mourning will disappear, and they will be filled with joy and gladness. Would you stand to your feet as we finish out our time together? The promise of I-35 is real. If you will follow the plans and the designs for God, He will remind you that He is right by your side. Hey, look, with anything, like, with anything in life, like, he, He's not left your side for your marriage. He's not left your side for your family. He's not left the side uh, in your life. He, he's not journeyed away from you. He is still by your side. Coronavirus 2020, he is still by your side. Let him guide you. Let him lead you. Go out front and lead you in the right path in your life. And I want to challenge some of you here today. Stay on the bike. Stay on the path. Get the pedaling. Stop the wobbling. Stay focused. Stay focused. And ride so fast that your hair is flowing in the wind because you are journeying with your heavenly father and pushing past the doubt and the fear and everything that's surrounding you and I. Did God know there would be a virus in 2020? Yes, so let him lead you along the way. He is in control. And the band is going to sing a song with a blessing over each of you. And they're going to be saying, the Lord bless you. The Lord keep you. Make his face shine upon you. Be gracious. The Lord turn his face towards you. Give you peace. May his favor be upon you. May you not forget in moments like this that our children are at stake. Our children's children are at stake. Thousands of generations are at stake. And what we do in moments like this, let us not forget. Let's pray together. This is the time, God, for the Christians. Some might say, like, this is the once-in-a-lifetime moment for the church. So will we go into our community and shine or not? God, I pray for strength amongst the believers in our room. It's in a moment like this. It's, it's not even what we do here. It's what we do when we leave, especially now more than ever. I pray for the lost or broken person. I, I, I would not want you leaving here today, going out into this chaos, not having security. Security in your salvation, knowing that you could have a peace when you leave here today about being on the path for those that are ransomed by the Lord. Would you bend a knee to him in your heart today if you are not a believer? Not because there's a coronavirus, but because God has a better plan for your life. He has eternal salvation as well, but he has, he has a purpose for you. He has a journey to put you on that allows you to pedal and pedal freely. But if you want to live in your sin and your fear, you'll find out the potholes and speed bumps along the way and the brokenness. But if you want to turn to him and receive the forgiveness that flowed from the cross through Jesus Christ, the love, the mercy, the grace, the blessings that flow from a relationship with God, if you want to receive that, you, you can surrender to him today and say, God, I trust you today. I believe in your son Jesus, death, burial, and resurrection, the gift of God died on the cross so that I could be forgiven and set free and pedal through this life into eternity. You can receive that right from where you are, those watching online. You receive that right now. It's in Jesus' name we pray.
Amen. Let the band just sing this song, blessing over you before you leave.
What a reminder of how great our God is and how faithful he is to love us, to care for us. Hey, thank you so much for watching online. So glad you have an opportunity to watch online. My name is Gary. This is my wife, Sean. And man, the online venue so helpful I know for so many people of course if you're in the area uh, we believe you ought to be deeply connected to the church locally and so if you are there by our campus please drop in on Saturday Sunday, start really connecting there in the meantime we have a lot of ways to connect online already take a minute and give us some information about yourself if you're watching online, there's a link above the page. And if you're watching Facebook Live, there is a link in the comments where you can fill out a connect card. Tell us about yourself. Send in any prayer requests so we can be praying for you. And if you gave your life to Christ, we would love to send you some information on next steps that you can take. Of course, uh, there's a financial part of this as well. Uh, doing these broadcasts uh, to East Pasco and reaching the world as we're doing online, there's a cost associated with it. And if you feel led to give, like so many are already doing, on the online page at the top there, you'll see a link to give. If you're on Facebook Live in the comments and in the threads, you'll also see uh, the link there to give as well. We'd love to have your financial support as we continue this journey. Again, thanks for watching. We hope your journey today is a great journey with us. We have online giving. I know